No. -uh. Only 85 calories. Right. I'm really excited to eat these. Look slightly more to the left. Social realism films. Maybe if you disappear forever, it wouldn't make any difference. You may as well not even exist at this school. I still didn't know why he liked me, but maybe Chloe had it spot on. Maybe I was his type. They dictate modern culture more than we know, particularly in your adults. Yeah, my lord. Because, as everybody knows, at that age, you just want your voice to be heard. In the days of modern technology, everybody wants to have their say. Often focused around drugs, sex, Mental health and relationships. It's no big deal. Everyone's got exes. If you were to go to the cinema and watch a social realism film, you could expect to see all of those ignored issues wow. that most youngsters face during their coming of age in their absolute extremity. I mean, you see, it's like nobody's like you, isn't it? And it's not exactly like anybody cares. I okay. Quavers, 86 calories per bag, equivalent of a 12 minute jog. 202 pound on treadmill, total minus 126. Now to get through dinner. The film trope definitely fits into the social realism film category, as it talks about an issue within youngsters that may not be regularly discussed in society and it mimics a lot of qualities found in existing films. There's real people that are struggling with this problem, with this problem yeah, every day, constantly throughout the country. I think it represents young adults quite well, as um, especially as we do it from a boy's point of view. Uh, most anorexia or body dysmorphia films or features are based on girls, so, uh, for example, Cassie and Skins. So we decided to do it from a boy's point of view, and by doing that, I think it opened up um, a lot of thoughts and um, for the audience. Hang on, you didn't... You're not quite sure what I'm on about, but I keep distracting you. Then I up the ante. Yum, I love this stuff. It works. If nothing else works, it works. Makes sense, doesn't it? If I don't eat, I get better. I'm not afraid. I just don't want to fail. I don't want to let them down. It's presenting a topic that isn't usually construed in the media, and it's something that people know about, but they're not very informed about, and this film is very good at informing people about the issues surrounding body dysmorphia in a very sensitive way, because it's very character-driven. The narrative itself and the plot as a whole follows Jordan, who is a sufferer of body dysmorphia. This type of disorder, which is often found in young people, is a classic theme of the social realism genre that discusses the unspoken struggles of youth. And like many other social realism films of the modern age, Choked makes it very apparent from the off that Jordan is not somebody you would expect to be suffering yeah. from the disorder. You were too pussy to even ask Jessica Kirby out. Say that again? Mm. Yeah, you're, you're a, a pussy. pussy. See how his character compares to this scene in My Mad Fat Diary, where it's discovered amongst you that despite appearances, they are all suffering from hidden fears. Diary, I'm crap at jokes. Ray's always cracking jokes. Some stuff I don't really get. Need to practice. Yeah, but let's be honest, Ray, when was the last time you seen a tower? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> the female body dysmorphia is not new to social realism and it doesn't challenge any values there. Anorexia is often a very much talked about issue. However, Choke does manage to subvert social norms by using a male character as the lead for this body dysmorphic storyline. Character suffering is usually portrayed as a girl due to stereotypical views that young females are more concerned about their weight and appearance than males, even though they suffer from similar peer pressures. Both Skins and Choke culminate their characters' unease in dramatic scenes where they are pushed over the edge and taken to harm in themselves. The casting went really well because we used people who were the actual ages of the characters but also the age of the audience that we were targeting. I think it meant we were able to give a realistic first-hand experience because everyone has those feelings of self-doubt and the thing is with Jordan is 
his are just heightened so high, but everyone knows them. And by taking actors like James and April, who are at that age and they're feeling all that rawness and all those hormones and all that emotion at the moment, they could really channel it. And they were fantastic actors at the same time, they had experience. So, and they got on really well on set, which was really good because you really did want to see like that they had friendship bonds, and I think that was important for the characters, and it made the whole film just run really smoothly. Obviously, he doesn't know that she's also dealing with body dysmorphia, but um, I think it's like almost a brother and sister relationship, but I think he likes her deep down. It's really nothing. I didn't know you were a photographer. I'm... I'm not. Often, because social realism focuses on real life, often the actual elements of the narrative are not what's most important. What's most important is the relationship between characters. This was something that was used in Choked. Close-ups of facial expressions and the proximities between characters are what defines their relationship and that's the true story that's going on to the audience. What's up? Nothing. Um, my favourite bit of filming was the bathroom scene where James as Jordan smashes up everything just because we had such an incredible vision of the editing we wanted to do in that bit. We knew we wanted it to be choppy, slightly shaky. We had like the music in the background and we knew that we wanted it to be like bam, bam, bam. And it was just really fun to film that scene over and over again from different angles with that vision in mind. If you consider this scene from Star Trek, where the Commander Spock loses control of his emotions when he is usually held back and restricted. The extreme close-ups highlight the extremity of the pressure that he is under, just like in Jordan's case. We can see that the camera goes very shaky, there's a lot of choppy shot action and quick editing to heighten the emphasis of his loss of control. This similar effect was made choked, especially as the flurry of editing represents Jordan's state of mind. Um, probably sitting on the cold boys' toilets in the wet, that was really fun. A range of locations were used for the filming of Choked. Although not all of the scenes were included in the final cut, they were all necessary in filming so that Jordan's backstory was understood. Many were still used in the process of creating the montage at the end, giving it aesthetic variety. While lots of locations were used, including the unisex toilets, the school, the park and the characters' homes, most of the shots were filmed in a very mundane environment. This challenges the conventions of a lot of films that use visual graphics to create their scenes or that go far afield to make their shots dynamic. But it also develops the social realism of the film, as most social realist situations are very mundane. The characters are often of a relatable, yet less represented working class and speak colloquially, dressing equally mundane and naturalistic, rather than made up with Hollywood movie set makeup and prosthetics. I think you're being a bit mean. We spend our lives being mean. Well, there's some things you don't make fun of. No, there's not. Yes, there is. Like what? Uh, missing mental people, crime victims, the disabled. You love disabled jokes. No, I don't. What about your screensaver? As this scene from him and her demonstrate, a lot of the dialogue between the characters of social realism film or TV shows is very casual and colloquial. Now, have you got the salad? Oh, I'll put this F in salad, Gwen. Look, I haven't done it, I'm not doing it, end of. And this effect was mimicked in the production of Choked. Oh, I should probably revise for that, but I'll do it later. Do you want to study after school? I've got gym. Are you going to eat that? No. Mind if I take it? I'm sorry, Angelina Journey is so much better. Oh my god, you're so full of shit, Jay. If you were lying naked on my bed, I wouldn't touch her. As if you're in any of their leagues. Even if a hedgehog was handed you on a plate, you'd say I'd take it. What's more, the aesthetics of Choked was handled so that it was presented in a certain way. The colouring of the scenes was changed to create a colder, more sincere environment. If we look at this scene from Remember Me, we can see how the lighting is dim and naturalistic to an apartment in New York. So this is the whole playful, you get me all wet part, right? Why well, make it sound cheap? It is cheap. I've seen this scene a hundred times. In social realism films, often the lighting is meant to represent natural scenery, not Hollywood staged or glamorous. 
The scenes are not meant to appear magical or bright or colourful as they are showing the dire truths of lives. And for this reason, we decided to edit the colouring of all of our scenes so that they match Jordan's melancholia, whilst also representing the true harshness of life. There is one aspect, however, where Choate can claim to be completely innovative for its time. By using calorie counts, it gives the audience insight into the character's mindsets, therefore even strengthening this social realism genre, with you becoming intimate with the character's most hidden fears and secrets. The audience knows these characters suddenly more personally than anybody else in the world. Editing allowed for the numbers to appear on screen as the characters direct their gaze towards food, and through this, the audience can gain a more sympathetic and empathetic connection with the characters. It also adds a sense of surrealism to the film, so while it does fit into social realism, this is a unique factor, especially with the montage at the end, which definitely takes away from the realism, but in a way, because it is giving the audience more insight into the characters' lives, it's actually adding to the relationship between the audience and the characters, therefore developing the genre. Here we see a scene from the film Romeo and Juliet, where a montage is used in almost exactly the same way to demonstrate a relationship between two characters and summarise it for the audience within a short amount of time. However, as it is rarely used in social realism films, it is still arguable that this is an innovative factor of Choate, the film. So, from classic teenage problems, to moody lighting, to the young adult characters that subvert social norms, Choate was successful into fitting into the social realism film genre, and it is safe to say that it uses develops, but also challenges many of the typical factors of existing media products.